So we're going to move on now to talk about Detroit, which is a, the new uh, sort of period drama, period crime drama, if you will, uh, concerning the 1967 Detroit Rebellion, the 12th Street Riot, as it's also known. Uh, Dominic, you saw this today. I saw this on Friday. You want to give a brief little overview of the film? Sure. So the film takes place in 1967, right as the 12th Street Riots begin in earnest. And amid all this chaos that you see on screen, you see looting, um, shootings, people getting beaten, police brutality, and also just, uh, you know, just kind of just general rioting and disorder going on on the streets of Detroit as as it happened in real life. Uh, in, the, in the middle of all that, you see a, um, you have a backdrop of what is called the Algiers Hotel incident, which is a controversial, uh, but, uh, you know, it, it did happen. Um, uh, an incident that took place concerning the murders of three uh, African Americans uh, amidst a police, uh, a police, uh, what do you call it? A police uh, raid. Raid. Yeah, there yeah. you go. A police raid onto the hotel as uh, they were taking sniper fire, and it, it, it turns into a mystery, and at sometimes a horror movie, and at times it's a very claustrophobic and visceral kind of movie you know that's that's pretty much the 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 course of the film that you're getting here mm -hmm. so it's it's in it's in i split it into the three parts and i think um, you can start with the riots and then you get into the mystery and the incident itself as it focuses starts to settle on characters and from there on you have your movie of just of of injustice i mean that's really at the heart of this movie of what it's of what it's trying to portray yeah yeah, yeah I, I definitely I definitely agree. So I'll give my thoughts on it a little bit, and then I'll, I'll mm -hmm. throw it over to you and stuff. Uh, this is a very, very loose, free-form movie, I, I would say. It's not as structured as I think a lot of people might assume, because there's a lot of angles you can take on this story. This, this Algiers Motel incident that this film focuses on is part of a larger uh, rebellion, again, from the 12th Street Riot, which took place in uh, July of 1967. This is the 50th anniversary of it was last month. Right. And the th and it's a very touchy subject. Obviously, you could take a lot of political routes. We're going to try and really look at it as a film. You can obviously take a lot of political routes. I talked a little bit about that in my review, which you can read on stevenmovieman.proboards.com, or you can go to IMDb and look on critic reviews and find my review on there of Detroit. I take it more of in a political direction because I know I can't really talk too many my, much politics on here, and I'd rather talk about the movie to begin with. But And it's hard not to just because of the timeliness. But anyway, uh, the thing about this movie is I would say it's probably the most... The, the least freeform movie, I would say, focusing on like this kind of an incident since Spike Lee's movie Rosewood, which is a very good movie from 1997 about the Rosewood Massacre. Definitely one to check out uh, that I know a lot of people have not seen. But the, the film... Uh, again, very freeform movie. Most of the film, as you said, takes place in the Algiers Motel. It focuses on a, a white officer played by Will Poulter, who's amazing in this movie. Yes. I, oh, he's truly fantastic! Truly great for being 24 years old. This is probably the big. This is the biggest is he in, in real life. 24 years old. Years old. Be if this guy the biggest role of his career so far, and it will probably still be if this guy could act till he's 84. And this is probably going to be the most challenging role he'll get. I think in terms of uh, in terms of just real scope and stuff and then you have um Again, he's a white police officer, and he's apprehended mostly, him and his, uh, the backup officers have apprehended mostly African-American men, uh, a couple of which, one is played by Anthony Mackie, who's a very good character actor. Uh, another one is played by Jacob Lattimore, who plays the brother of um, Larry Reed, who is from the Dramatics. He's from the soul group, the Dramatics. He, uh, Larry Reed is played in the movie by Algie Smith, another very good actor. And then you have, kind of on the sidelines, if you remember Star Wars The Force Awakens, John Boyega, who plays Melvin Desmond who is this uh, African-American security guard working uh, security at the nearby grocery store who notices the the incident in the Algiers. Because basically what happened with the Algiers motel incident is still not conclusive to this day, and the film no, admits at that all. at the end. The, 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 the idea, though, is that they thought there was an active sniper incident because they saw shots being rung out of, the mo of like the third story of the motel. But it was really, the movie puts it, and this is what most witness accounts say, one of the, one of the, 
in order to like provoke the officers nearby, a uh, person fired a starter gun outside of the window. Starter gun, like you'd start a horse race, which is non lethal, doesn't fire, which is not a lethal, gun. fires blanks, you know, harmless. And the person who actually fires it, you saw straight out of Compton, right? Yeah. You know, the guy who fires that gun in the movie, his name is Carl. It's Jason Mitchell. That who played, he played Easy E. Mm -hmm. He played yeah. Easy E. I love Jason Mitchell. He's been in some really good stuff. He was in Kong Skull Island earlier this he, year. He had a lot of praise for Easy E. Oh, he did. He was a great Easy E man. I mean, he really was. I think Mitchell's going to be a really, really good actor, household name in a few years. But again, there's a lot of stuff in this movie too that's very um, interpretive, even too, in terms of like you know what direction you want to look at. Uh, you know, certain moments in this film too. Most of it does take place. The movie's two and a, about two hours and twenty three minutes. It mostly takes place in the Algiers Motel. Uh, it opens, however, showing a lot of the chaos and stuff, and the rioting and looting that's going on in Detroit at this time. And then it towards the end, after the Algiers Motel incident, it takes a look at the uh, litigation aspects and stuff like that. Tur sort of turns into like a courtroom drama, if you will. So that's kind of the whole structure of the movie, all right? And it really takes a look at the police brutality that went on and stuff, the murders of the men that went on uh, at that time. This is a very harrowing movie. This is not an easy sit. and it's it, As are most Catherine uh, Bigelow movies. Yes. This it, is an extremely visceral movie. Yes. It, it, it hits so hard. And it's, like I said, it's not easy to sit through. And, 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 it's, and I've said it before, too. This this is not really the movie that you want to that you want to sit through on a after a long weekend okay yeah. judging it too by the fact that the film came in like near last place at the box office yeah. too i mean this is not a movie many people want to sit through and it's again you see a lot of stuff nowadays too with being addressed of course this is a movie i said before it should be a time capsule movie this should be a movie that we look at in a way like um 12 years a slave like lincoln we look at these movies like how could that happen you know what i mean you know or that never happens anymore right. the emoji movie the f stop I'm it kidding. the fact that <laughs> detroit the fact that detroit takes an issue police brutality and stuff like that something that is still very much a political buzzword today very much a real problem more importantly today as evident by the increasing number of un unarmed african americans that are that are murdered every year not to mention two controversial people like Colin Kaepernick of the San, uh, formerly of the San Francisco 49ers that literally uh, took a knee uh, against the national anthem to protest that very thing. But it's not just that people don't want to sit through this movie, but people should sit through it. And that's the tough part. It's hard to tell somebody that worked all week, worked 40, 50 hours at a week, uh, you know what I mean, to go watch something like this for two and a half hours and emerge, you know, kind of upset about the whole thing. You know what I mean? Because it's not a movie to lift your spirits at all. No, it's, it's an upsetting movie, but that's that's exactly what they want you to take away it from is. this. It uh, is. Like I said, there is injustice in this movie in some manner, even though there's controversial, like, okay, really, what are the facts here? And the movie admits that, you know, the facts are not clear because it's just, it, it all comes down to conflicting arguments being 1967 and there was no technology back then to corrobor corroborate much. No. But even then, there, there were still like three wrongful, what is most likely some sort of at least one wrongful death in this whole incident that took place. Foul play, yes, Foul absolutely. play or what have you. Yeah, and, and the thing is too is again, like people that see this movie obviously are going to see, you know, the ending and stuff and they're going to see incredible parallels to now and to present day, which is really the su most surprising thing of all. Not surprising, but really the most telling thing of of the whole movie that's what i took away from it before we get into you know technicalities and structure and what we like Absolutely. About the, as a film but, bef but just Subtext. i just want to kind of bookend it with saying like you know it, when i was sitting through the movie and seeing like you know kind of chaos and chaos on the streets or just people being abused uh by authority figures uh it, it's it, it's amazing because how many years ago were the ferguson riots right yeah. that's so fresh in our minds yeah that's still a thing that happens so unlike even slavery, which we've effectively, you know, at least legal, right, slavery, we've uh, effectively stamped that out Abolish, in this country. Yeah. That, that, that is definitely dated. Detroit doesn't feel all that dated. No.